Shall I try this one then? Shall I try this one? I'll try this one. Nothing. Okay. Right. I'm going to start. Welcome, everybody. Okay. Prayer works. Oh, I think it's a bit loud now. Is it possible to lower it a bit? <laughs> My goodness, I don't know how the actors and the celebrities do it. Anyway, we're going to start from the top. You are most welcome to Highway Vineyard Church. I'm Alison and I'm leading the service today. And please accept our apologies for the techno technology issues earlier. So, we just thank God so much for the gift of life. It's by his grace that each and every one of us has made it here today. I'd just like you to still your hearts, forget about the busy week that has gone, forget about the rest of the year that is to come, and just say, Lord Jesus, let's have more of you. And let's say, come, Holy Spirit. Olu and the band will be leading us in worship. The children will be going out to kids' church after the second song. We'll keep you updated with what's happening, with notices. And then we have a couple who will share a testimony for us. We'll also have a time of prayer for Nigeria. And then Gareth will bring us the word. So before we go into worship, I'd just like to say a short prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you the praise, we give you the thanks, we give you the adoration. We lift this service up to you. And we ask that your Holy Spirit will be in full and total control. Minister to us, Lord, at the point of our need. And as our worship goes up, let your glory come down. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Over to you. Amen. Amen. Do you want to rise to your feet?
of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air I breathe in. I have a future. My eyes are open. Cause when you call my name, and I ran out of that grave. I would have threw darkness into your glory. Your soul, you 
you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Say, get up and praise. Say, come on. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy of me. Lift up your soul. You've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Say, come on, my soul. Say, come on, my soul. Don't you get shy of me, lift up your song. You got a lion inside of those walls. Get up and praise the Lord. Sing, come on, my soul, sing, come on, my soul. Don't you get shy of me, lift up your song. You got a lion inside of those walls. Sing out to God. Sing praise the Lord. We praise the Lord, Lord. We praise the Lord, Lord. You're worthy, worthy of all praise. Worthy of all praise. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I'm nothing else fit for a key. Except for a heart singing hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. 
for you. I'm desperate for you. So I'm lost without you, Jesus. I'm lost without you. So I'm desperate for you, Lord. I'm desperate for you. I'm lost without you. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name. We are desperate for you, Lord. And we just ask for more of your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that you will crown us with your grace and your compassion and your mercy. And we pray, Father God, that our lives will be lived to your glory. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. Thank you, Olu and the band. You're most welcome once again. And as we continue with our service, I'd like to invite Peter and Doreen Sullivan to come up to share a testimony with us. Please welcome them as they come. Morning, church. Oh, we'll take it. Yeah. Now, um, Alison said to me, I've only got five minutes. So I've got a, a piece of paper here, but I assure you, those that know me, I, I don't go on for very long. I just want to really put God in, in, in and let you know that what's come to light to us in these in this year that's just passed is the way God is so real. And the scriptures that we, um, we learn when we first become Christians, like, as thy day, so shall I strength be. Mm -hmm. We've prayed that many times over this last year. And God hasn't let us down. He's given us the strength we need. Mm -hmm. We've had to make some quite um, tough decisions. But I can say to you again, and my wife Doreen will tell you, that we've made that decision and once we've made that decision, God's been with us in it the whole time. Now, now just basically what's happened from the 22nd of December 2021, I was diagnosed with um, cancer of the bladder, right? I had an operation in January 22 to remove that and then we had to go to, for various consultations over what the um, doctors could do. And uh, you know, in, in the newsletter, you, you see that I was given three options, to have my bladder removed, to have uh, immunotherapy and radiotherapy. And we, after you know, praying about this, we decided not to have the operation. And at one time, actually, uh, I was going to not have any treatment at all and just rely on God to bring me through. And um, one night after we'd been to uh, University College Hospital London to tell them what, what they was going to do if they removed my bladder, um, I was so, um, well, I thought this is going to make it worse than, than the condition that I'm experiencing. So we, we called, uh, we've got three daughters, three son-in-laws, when we got home from the hospital, we called them round, told them what we decided, and um, they agreed with us that you know we, we'd go that way. But um, in in March, I had to go up to Barts where I, I met uh, Professor Tom Powles, and um, he said that um, I could go on a, a trial with this in, in, immunotherapy and uh, take things uh, you know a day at a time. So I, I, we went for the, um, the immunotherapy, which basically was I had to go three, um, have, have one treatment that lasted about two hours, three weeks, then another one, three weeks, and then another one. 
And uh, after that, that's when I, I decided that they was offering me um, radiotherapy as well to, to make sure the, the cancer was cleared. And the, um, the, the radiotherapy was four weeks up to Bart's, where we, we live in Plasto, four weeks up to Bart's in August. So the whole of the month of August was taken up with us travelling up there, having the treatment and coming home. But another thing I want to emphasise, that all these different things that they offered us, there was a whole list of side effects, about, about eight, eight pages of A4, A4, the side effects, and we agreed as a family that we would pray that um, I wouldn't have any side effects. And through God's will and judgement, I had all the treatment that they uh, prescribed and no side effects, for which I, I thank God for. Um, I mean, to, to bring things up to date, in, in December last year, I had to go to Whips Cross for a cystoscopy. I'm getting used to saying that now. And they had a look inside, and I'm all clear at the moment. So they're going to um, keep an eye on me and I've got, I've got to go, um, I think it's in April, for another cystoscopy. They're keeping an eye and make sure that my body is clear. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? God is good. Amen. And all the time, Peter and Doreen have been a member of this congregation for many years. And they are also active with our senior citizens group, friends and neighbors. And when the family let us know what was happening, we've been praying along with them. Doreen, did you have a few words? Well, I just want to say thank you for your prayers Amen. because every one of them was answered. Praise his name. Um, yeah, it's been a roller coaster. I can't say it's been up and down, up and down, but every time we felt we were gotten hit rock bottom, God picked us up again, Amen. and off we went again. And it was, um, I just had a peace um, throughout it all, most of the time, um, because I just knew God would not let us down. He hadn't failed us in all the years we've been saved, and that's 50-odd years. Mm. And he's never failed us, and he's done some wonderful things in our life. Amen. And we knew um, that he wanted the best for Peter. So we just prayed and claimed all the promises that he gives you every day. And every day we left the house, um, and we say, we haven't got any strength, Lord. He said, my strength is sufficient for you. Get on and go. And we had four weeks in August where Peter said we had to go every day. It was a heat wave And it was August, that heat wave. And we would go out the door, and the heat would hit us. And we said, yeah. we can't do this anymore. <laughs> but with God's help, we yep. flew there. <laughs> we flew there. One day we actually ran up the road because we were a bit late. So, you know, God is so precious and so good. Please don't ever think that you're going to be on your own because you never will be on your own. If you've given your heart to Christ, he has got his hand tight on you and he will never let you go. Amen. Please don't go just yet. Psalm 103 says, Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins, heals all your diseases, redeems your life from the pit, and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things. So together as a church, we praise God with you. We thank God for you, and we lift you up and the family, and we ask in the name of Jesus that his precious blood will continue to preserve and to protect you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that in his element as Jehovah, creator and sustainer of life, he will continue to be real to you, that you will continually give testimonies of his goodness in your life and in that of your family. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. And when we hear a testimony, yes, we rejoice, but then 
some of you may be remembering challenges that you have, either for yourself with health conditions or with people that you know. So we take a step of faith. We say, Father God, you who did it in Peter's life, in Doreen's life, in the life of the family, do it again. So right now, at this moment in time, if there is anyone in the congregation who is struggling or who has a challenge with health, please, I would ask you to be bold, to stand up. Or if you know somebody, a friend, a work colleague, a relative who has a challenge, you can stand up and use yourself as a point of contact. So we pray. Is there anybody in the congregation? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And by standing up, we say, Lord, we have faith. Amen. And at the same time, we say, Lord, increase our faith. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come together as one church to pray and to intercede. Please stretch out your hands towards the people standing. Father God, we ask you as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer, to touch the people, Lord, where they need healing. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for the people who are here in this auditorium, people who are at home, people are watching online, that your Holy Spirit will touch them where they are. In the mighty name of Jesus, we command healing. In the mighty name of Jesus, we command comfort. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that grace and strength and comfort and recovery will be released. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, amen. and amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you both. Thank you for being part of that. And secondly, I'd like to invite John and Cecilia Olufenmi and Jane Adiku to come up. We will do some intercessions for Nigeria. There's going to be an election soon, I think on the 24th to the 25th. 25th. And sometimes these events come with political unrest. A large number of our congregation are from Nigeria. We want to stand with our brothers and our sisters at this time. So Jane will say a short prayer of intercession for us. Thank you, sis. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Our Father, we thank you so much because you are the God that hears us and you are the God that answers prayers. And we thank you, Lord, for the testimony that has just gone out this morning. And we stand, O oh God, upon this, O oh God, Lord Jesus, because we know you're going to do more. And so, God, we are bringing Nigeria before you. Father, our country has gone through so many turbulent times, O oh God. Not that you do not bless. You have blessed us, but because, Lord Jesus, the human effect of everything that we're doing, O oh Lord, has reduced the glory of that country. Now, this is another time. Oh, God, that Father, we have this pres presidential election coming up on the 25th of this month. Father, we desperately need you, even as we have sung a few moments ago. For Nigeria is lost without you. We've gone through Boko Haram, kidnapping, and so many things because of bad government. This is a time, oh God, opportunity to choose somebody else, oh God. But Lord, we don't want to be confused. Lord, we don't want to be deceived, oh God. And so we are praying, God, that as people go out, Father, to cast their vote. Father, your spirit will move them to choose the person that has their welfare at heart, oh God. Somebody who will come, oh God, to revive the glory of that country, Lord Jesus. We pray, oh God, for the electoral commissioners, oh God. At the moment, everyone is saying, oh, it's a done deal. They know who is going to be elected. But God, you are the God of surprises, oh Lord. We are praying, Lord, every confusion, oh God, everything that has been hidden, oh God. Lord, you know how to make the crooked way straight, oh God. And all the crooked processes, oh God, Father, you're going to make them straight, oh God. That at the end of the day, God, when the result is re released, oh God, everyone will know that it is God who has done this. No man could have done it, oh God. And Father, we pray also for peace, oh God, for everyone. There's tension everywhere, Lord Jesus. 
We just need you, O God. Our Father, have mercy upon us, O God. Jesus, have mercy. For we need you, God. Our family back home need you, Lord Jesus. We cannot do it without you. We've gone through enough, O God, as a country. Father, come and visit us again. Father, come and visit us again, for we need you. Let there be peace. We don't want any life, O God, to be lost in this process, O God. We don't want any protest, O God, Lord Jesus. We speak peace, O God, to everyone. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We ask you to come and take control. Come and take control, oh God, Lord Jesus. We join our brothers and sisters back home, the churches, oh God. The Father, as we cry to you, oh God, we cry for mercy. Have mercy upon us, oh Lord. Thank you, Father, for we come again, oh God, to testify of your goodness. Thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. It's time for the notices now. So please, if you'd like any information about our church, visit the website. Okay, the next slide. If you feel inclined to give towards the work of the church, you can give online, or there's a little box at the connect point where you can place cash donations. We are a praying church. We've had testimonies to that effect. If you'd like to be part of our weekly prayer, please go online. We pray from Monday, Mondays to Fridays, 8 to 8.30 via Zoom. It's Metro Connect Week, so this is where we meet. We gather in homes of our congregation members. If you don't have a Metro Connect, please see Christine, myself, and we will place you somewhere. And also, we have Count Me In Coffee with Simon. So if you've already arranged to meet with Simon and Claire, our senior pastor, for Count Me In, please, it's happening at 7.30. This is where people who have been worshiping with us and want to join get to meet with Simon and Claire. And I think that is all we have for notices. So as Gareth gets ready to preach to us, it's meet and greet time. Please get up, say hello to one or two people, and then we will have our sermon. Thank you.
Is this on or off? On. The red means on. <laughs> okay, if we can get back to our seats. Good morning, everyone. How are we feeling this morning? It's interesting, actually, as you look out from here, because um, a lot of you are in sort of dark colours, and Paul is like a rainbow in the middle, <laughs> a rainbow of hope <laughs> in the middle of the church. Good morning, Paul. <laughs> um, my name's Gareth. Um, if you don't know me, um, I live in Upton Park. I'm not from Upton Park, you can probably tell by my accent. Um, Michael always says when I talk, I always talk about Wales, and I will talk about Wales the game today. Definitely not about rugby. <laughs> not going to mention rugby at all. <laughs> That'll be the end of rugby talk. I'm not doing very well at the moment. Um, and I hope we do go on strike before we play England next week, because I don't think we're <laughs> going to win. <laughs> um, we are continuing our series uh, on Elisha. And... Uh, Ridiculous re resurrection today. So we're going to uh, read the word in a minute, but let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, that you have drawn us into your purpose, that you've saved us. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for us. And thank you that we can have hope today because of what you've done. And thank you, Lord, as we look out in, onto our streets, into our communities, Lord, that you look at them too and you long for them to come to you. And thank you that you are the God of resurrection. Thank you, Jesus, that you broke the power of sin and of death and that your power is at work in us and in your church today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, 2 Kings 4, 2 Kings 4 verse 8. Um, before we do that, just a, a slight funny story I remembered earlier on when I was talking to Bruce um, Paul, you were talking on Elisha last time, and you missed out some important verses, didn't you, about where, where the young men shout at Elisha, and they say, go on up, you bald head. <laughs> you know, and the bears come out, and, and I was talking to Bruce and saying, he, he, he was sort of saying, well, that was terrible, and I said, no, that was quite good, I thought. Um, I don't know why I thought that was good, but, uh, you know, <laughs> you can tell. Um, and after, after the sermon, we actually went to Vic, Vicky Park, Victoria Park. And uh, this is a true story in there, Helen Wood. Very funny story. We, me and my Helen were, were discussing in the car about the fact that Paul has left those out. And we, we would like to hear a sermon on those, on those verses. And um, as we were discussing it, these two boys went past on an electric bike through Victoria Park really fast. And as they went past me, they went... Oi, oi, bald head. <laughs> and do you know what? The bear... <laughs> Actually, true story, it did happen. I just shouted oi, oi, back, to be fair. But um, my, my daughters thought it was hilarious. But, um, you know. Anyway, <clears throat> 2 Kings 4, verse 8. One day, Elisha went to Shunem, and a well-known to-do woman was there who urged him to stay for a meal. So whenever he, whenever he came by, he stopped there to eat. She said to her husband, I know that this man often comes our way, is a holy man of God. Let's make a small room on the roof and put in a bed and a table and a chair and a lamp for him. <clears throat> then he can stay there wherever, whenever he comes to us. One day, when Elisha came, he went up to his room and lay down there. He said to his servant, Gehazi, call the Shun Shunammite. So he called her, and she stood before him. Elijah said to him, to, said to, Elijah said to him, tell her, have you gone to all this trouble for us? Now what can be done for you? 
Can we speak on your behalf to the king of the, or the commander of the army? She replied, I have a home among my people. What can be done for her? Elisha asks. Gehazi said, well, she has no son and her husband is old. Then Elisha says, call her. So he called her and she stood in the doorway. About this time next year, Elisha said, you will hold a son in your arms. No, my lord, she objected. Don't mislead your servant, O man of God. But the woman became pregnant, and the next year, about that same time, she gave birth to a son, just as Elijah had told her. So the child grew, and one day he went out to his father, who was with the reapers. My head, my head, he said to his father. His father told his servant, carry him to his mother. After the servant had lifted him up and carried him to his mother, the boy sat in her lap until noon, and then he died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door and went out. She called her husband and said, please send one of the servants and a donkey so that I can go to the man of God quickly and return. Why go to him today, he asked. It's not the new, it's not the new moon or the Sabbath. It's all right, she said. She saddled the donkey and said to her servant, lead on, don't slow down for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When he saw her at a distance, the man of God said to the servant Gehazi, look, there is the Shunammite. Run to meet her and ask her, are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your child all right? Everything is all right, she said. When she reached the man of God at the mountain, she took hold of his feet. Gehazi came over to push her away, but the man of God said, leave her alone. She is in bitter distress, but the Lord has hidden from me what, and has not told me why. Did I not ask you for a son, my Lord, she said. Did I tell you don't raise my hopes? Elisha says to Kazi, tuck your cloak in your belt, take my staff in your hand and run. If you meet anyone, do not greet them. If anyone greets you, do not answer. Lay my staff on the boy's face. But the child's mother said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So he got up and followed her. Kazi went on ahead and laid the staff on the boy's face, but there was no sound of response. So Kazi went back to meet Elisha and told him the boy is not awakened. When Elisha reaches the house, there was the boy laying dead on his couch. He went in, shut the door on the two of them and prayed to the Lord. He then got on the bed and laid upon the boy, mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, hands to hands. He stretched out himself upon the boy. The body's bo body grew warm. Elijah turned away and walked back and forth in the room and then got out of the bed and stretched upon him once more. The boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Elijah summoned Gehazi and said, call the Shunammite. And he did. And when she came, he said, take your son. She came in, fell at his feet and bowed to the ground. Then she took her son and went out. Amen. May God bless the reading of his word. Um, several years ago, I was in uh, Addis Ababa, and um, I was involved with a mission organization, and I was working with uh, a good friend called Derogé. Um, and uh, it was a, a Bible training school. So he'd said to me that all these guys... He said, have been, um, all these trainee pastors have been out um, in, the, in the field, in the villages. He said, they've been learning in college, then they went out. And I said, what were they doing? He said, they were, um, he said they were preaching the gospel, healing the sick, and raising the dead. And he said, they've been doing that for three months. I know they've come back for some more teaching. He said, can you teach them? And I was thinking, <laughs> I, was thinking I can't teach these guys anything. Um, so I did, I, I, I preached the word to them, he, uh, Derogé translated for me. And then um, as, as some of you who've, who've, uh, who are from uh, the continent of Africa or have been in a prayer meeting in Africa, he said, can you pray? Uh, at the end, Derogé said, can you pray? So I said to the guys, the, the, the trainee pastors, the way, I said, let's pray. And I was about to pray, but then they stood up and they started praying all the same time. And it went on for two hours. These guys were fired up for the kingdom of God. So when we look at the passage today, I think we see um, the power of God at work. Amen? But that power is not diminished to this day. Amen? The power of God is still at work now. And it says in the Bible that the, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is at work in you. Amen? 
Maybe you don't feel like that all the time, but it's true. Um, so in terms of background, Elisha, and I, I, was just, I was just trying to get in my head around Elisha a little bit. Obviously, he was bald, like me. <laughs> That's a good thing. Um, but he really was a political activist. He was speaking to kings and commanders, and he was speaking into the direction of a nation. This guy was powerful. He was a prophetic voice, foretelling and foretelling the word of God to the people of God. He wasn't afraid to speak out against injustice. Um, so as well as being a prophetic voice and a mentee to Elijah... These guys demonstrated the power of God as well. And it reminded me of 1 Corinthians 2 verses 4. My message, this is Paul speaking, the Apostle Paul. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Your faith may not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. So... In a way, okay, we, we take this because it's important really that we know it's important to preach the word of God, amen? It's important to speak out against injustice. And it says in the Bible that you are not the tail, but you are the head. Who are the most powerful people in London? Is it Rish, Rishi Sunak? Can't say his name, Rishi Sunak, got it right this time. All right? Is it, um, is it somebody else? I don't know. Uh, the mayor, Sadiq Khan. Who are the most powerful people in London? Well, it's you, the people of God, because you are connected with the most powerful person in the universe. Amen? So we should all be political activists in a way. We should speak into the community as Elisha did. But also we should not be afraid... To operate in the power of God as the church of God. The wisdom of God is made manifest through the church, through us, his people, by word and by deed. And we see that in the early church, don't we? So they didn't just preach the gospel, they fed the poor, didn't they? The most desperate in society, they fed them, they cared for them. But they also operated in the power of God. They healed the sick. And things haven't changed. Right? We are still the church of God. All right? And we can still speak into injustice as Elijah did. Okay? We can still operate in the power of God. And we can still speak the word of God. Amen? And Elisha, it seems to me, was, he, was, <laughs> he was bald, but he was bold as well, right? <laughs> so we can't all be bold. Sorry, you can't all be like me. But you can be bold because God is on your side. I only do that in way of introduction, by the way. I'm going to my points yet. <laughs> okay, so let's dig into the story a bit. The first thing to know, which I think is quite interesting, um, is all this came about because of hospitality. The Shumanite woman, we don't know her name. I would say her name if we could. We could call her Beryl or something, but I don't know her name because it never says what her name is. The Shumanite woman. Because she was from the place called Shuman. So she was a Shumanite. Um, she offers hospitality to the man of God. Interesting. Um, this is interesting on two counts. Because I'd say this, okay. One is offer hospitality. That's basic, right? So some, some have entertained angels without realizing, as it says in the New Testament, offer hospitality. Um, be open to people. It's not, it's not easy to do sometimes in London. Talk to people, right? And you know me, you've heard me talk before. I'm a grumpy old man and God often prods me or my wife to talk to people. Um, but let's be people who are hospitable. But the other note is Elisha receives her hospitality. Interesting, right? And when you look at Luke 10, you know when Jesus sends out the 72, what does he tell them to do? He says, go in, go in and eat with them. Accept hospitality. Church, we need to be in places and spaces where we accept hospitality. Because when we do that, God can use that for his glory. Things begin to happen when people sit around, eat together, and talk together. One of the issues we have as a church of God 
in, in, um, in the UK is lots of Christians have no non-Christian friends. They don't hang out with them. They don't talk to them. So how can we share the good news? How can we see the power of God at work unless we interact with people who don't know Jesus? Amen? We need to do that. Um, lots of us here will work <laughs> in lots of different challenging environments, in schools, in hospitals. Um, those are brilliant places to be salt and light. But sometimes it's about accepting hospitality. It's about sitting down with people and sharing with people. So all this began because of hospitality. Okay, so as the story moves on, so Elisha is in this woman's house. Okay, they've, they've actually set a room out for him. Isn't that a wonderful thing? He's got his own room in this house. And um, after he comes, comes back and forth a few times, he's sort of thinking, he says to his son, what can we do for this woman? She's done so much for us. So um, he calls the woman in. And he says, what can I do for you? And it's interesting what he says, because what he says is, what, I can speak to the king. I can speak to, um, I can speak to uh, the commander of the army for you. And she says, no, you know, <laughs> it's, it's sort of, I, I'm happy, I'm content sort of thing. That's, what, that's her reply. But actually, uh, I, I think Elisha wants to get to the heart of what her real need is. Now, today... The good news is that God knows your need. He knows exactly what you want. But don't you think that is interesting that he wants you to say it? There's a power in speaking something out. Okay? Uh, I'm reminded of the story of uh, blind Bartimaeus. Um, you know, and Jesus has this interaction with him. And he says to him, what do you want me to to do for you. Now, you could say it's quite obvious. This guy's begging on the streets because he's blind, okay? And everybody knows it. But Jesus says to him, what do you want me to do for you? And in the same way, Elisha is asking this woman, what do you want me to do for you? So what is the deepest need or desire of your heart today? Is it something that you can't, you're afraid to speak out? You're just afraid to speak it out. God already knows it. Is, it. is it a struggle that you have personally? Is it, is, it, is it some health issue or you know something you've never spoken out? God knows the desire of your heart. Is it for somebody to be restored, somebody be, to be saved? Is it that impossible thing that you can, you, you'd never think could happen? God knows. Amen. So what are we going to do now? You don't normally do this in sermons, do you? But, you know, I'm only on point one. But let's stand up together because you look quite tired. Let's stand. And we stand before the God that knows everything today. Amen? He knows everything about you. Nothing is hidden. Nothing you've done wrong is hidden. He knows you fully, yet he loves you fully. I, I'm always amazed by that, that God would know me fully and still love me. It's incredible. So I just want you to spend a moment. You don't have to do it verbally. What is the deepest desire of your heart today? What is the deepest desire? I want you just to speak it out before God. Lord Jesus, this is what I long for. This is what I desire above all things, Lord. Lord Jesus, you know my heart. You know my failings. You know everything about me. Lord Jesus, meet me in this place today. Meet me at the point of my greatest need. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Let's, let's just take a seat. So, um, eventually, actually, she doesn't say it, does she? You note in the story, it's actually the servant that's of, of uh, Elisha that says it. He says, well, actually, um, she hasn't got a, a son, and her husband is old. Um, 
So Elisha then speaks into that scenario. Okay, he says, um, this time next year you will have a son. Wow, it's powerful. Guys, I think as Christians sometimes we're afraid to get involved, but it's good to step in and speak in. Sometimes I've been in situations where I don't know what to say. Have you ever been in those circumstances? They're so difficult and so painful. But don't afraid to be there in that place. Don't be afraid to ask the questions. Don't be afraid to go to that deep place with people. I think, you know, we are more um, equipped, if you like, than anybody else in a sense, uh, uh, being, being um, God's children to speak into those moments. Now, this is a bold speak out, okay? This woman who, who hasn't got a son, he speaks into that scenario. Um, and lo and behold, a year later, um, a son is born. A son is born. So uh, as, as the story continues, and it, we don't know the time frame here, but it seems like the boy grows up. The boy grows up. Um, so the Lord answers the, prayer, the, the, the prayers of Elisha, the prophet, and the woman's prayers and her heart's desire, and the son is born, and he grows up, and he develops. And she loves him and he's loved. But then tragedy strikes. So the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Um, this must be devastating for this woman. Really, really devastating. Um, and, you know, you could ask the question, well, why, why does this bad thing happen? Really, why does this terribly bad thing happen? When God has bless this woman and she's had a son and now the boy grows up and now the boy dies at, at, at a young age well it doesn't really give the context to why we know he's got a headache so he says his head's hurting so it could it, it could have been a number of medical reasons why this boy has died but i will say this because we we live in a world don't we where there is uh, disease decay devastation disasters and death there's a lot of d's there but you know what i'm saying right and, um, you know, God doesn't say all those things will be taken away. He doesn't say that. Because we know the world is out of tilt since Adam, Adam and Eve's sin, when they stepped away from God and decay came into the world and death came into the world and disaster came into the world. And it talks about it in Romans 8. It says, it says the, whole of the whole of the earth longs for the return of Jesus because then there'll be a new heaven, new earth. Okay, so restoration will come, but it's not come yet. Okay, so death, disaster, destruction, these things happen, and they will continue to happen, and our hearts go out to all the victims and the families and the tragedies that have happened in Turkey in the last few weeks. I mean, we can't just imagine. I was watching just a, a news clip of it yesterday, and, and it was the whole streets were destroyed. And everybody was on, in tears. And you talk to one person, if, if their direct family's not died, it's their, it's their relatives that have died. And it's, it's, it's horrible. And you just, you, can, you, you can't help but cry out, but why God? Why God? But it says in the Bible there will be destruction. Uh, and it's not going to decrease. It says it's going to increase. That, that's what the Bible says. But then Jesus will return and restore all things. And put all things back into to place. So I think, you know, in, when you encapsulate into this story, we see this woman's devastation. The storms of life will always come. They always will. But this is particularly devastating for this woman. So we, we see that God can turn um, bad into good. He's able to do that. And, and this particular story, we know where it's heading. Praise God. And God is able to bring, to bring resurrection in, in, into the things that seem dead. And uh, I've mentioned you before, and as I thought about this, I thought about um, a staff member at a, a London City Mission. We call her Mama Sarah. And I mentioned this before, I think, a, 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 f a few months ago. But she, she and a few others of her family run a, a project called Operation Forgiveness. And her son was... Um, taken away from her at the age of 15, was stabbed to death outside a school in South London. His name was Zach. He was a, a wonderful boy. And, and really, out of that devastation, this project has come, has come to birth. And now they go into schools all across London 
um, taking this message of forgiveness and this gospel message. Um, and she says, you know, this wouldn't have, wouldn't have happened unless Zach had died. But, you know, she still carries the burden of that tragedy. So God is able to bring good from bad. Um, so the next thing that happens, next slide would be, um, where do we turn in, in, in our times of deep distress? So the Shumanite woman, what she does is takes, takes the boy and puts him on the bed of Elisha. And I think all this process really for her is putting God in the center of this circumstance. So she sees Elisha and she sees this is a man of God. So she sees the presence and the power of God and she places him um, on his couch. And then she goes off to find Elisha. Okay, because she thinks, Elisha, and I don't know, maybe there's a dual thing. Maybe part of her thinks, well, maybe God can do something. Maybe. Maybe the man of God can do something. Or maybe she just wants to shout at him, because that's what she does when she finds him eventually. She says to him, I told you not to raise my hopes. And you sort of imagine the emotion of this moment. Here's this man of God, and she respects him as a man of God, but she's sort of airing her, her heart and her distressed him. Why did you raise my hopes? Why did you answer my prayer? And then my son is taken away from me. You can imagine the pain of the moment. And uh, there's a whole situation here where he, he wants to send his... Uh, his staff, you know, which is a representation of God's power to the, um, to, he sends his servant with the staff to take it to the boy, to lay it on the boy. But the woman wants to stay with Elisha. She wants to stay, if you like, in the presence of God, even in the midst of her pain. So where do you go in your moments of stress? Where do you go in your moments of distress? Are you turning to God? Are you turning to distraction? Are you looking for a way out and escape? Or are you looking to work through the pain and come out the other side with God? What does that look like for you? What does it look like? So often there's so many distractions today, isn't there, in life. But what is it for you? Are you willing to walk through your pain with the Lord? As this woman did. She, she, she stayed with Elijah. She shared her her angst, her pain with him, but she stayed with him. Um, and then Elijah, you know, they, when I was thinking about this, and we can all, I, I suppose, speak of our moments of pain. You know, sometimes when we're in that place of great pain, it's like the, the, the Celts used to call it a thin place between heaven and earth. It's almost like every distraction is pulled away and all we can do is stand be- be- before the almighty power of the Lord and say, here I am, Lord, meet with me. I've got nothing else. I've got nothing else. A thin place between heaven and earth. So maybe you're in that place today, I don't know. You're just at the end of yourself. You don't know where to go. But I encourage you, just walk through it with God. Walk through it with God. We heard wonderful testimony of how you walked with God, through your pain, you felt like giving up, then God gave you the energy and the strength to go through and come out the other side. Praise God. Praise God for that. Um, so that it didn't work that laying the staff in the boy's head. So then Elisha himself goes to be with the boy. Um, 1904. Takes you back, doesn't it? 1904. Anybody alive in there? 1904. <laughs> In 1904, there's a young man called Evan Roberts. He was a Welsh man. There we are. You knew the Welsh thing was coming, didn't you? Um, He'd been in North Wales training in a Bible college, and God had met with him, and his heart was on fire for God. He went back to his home church, which was in Lacha, which is hard to say if you're not Welsh, uh, just a few miles up the road from where I'm I'm from, a little place called Llanelli, which is even harder to say. Um... Small village lacha, really. And he went to his chapel, which was called Moriah. He said to the minister, can I speak to the congregation? God has set my heart on fire. And the minister said, no. (laughs) But you can speak to the young people after the service. So after the service, Evan Roberts went into the crypt of the church where they held the youth service. 
And as the young people walked into the door, they walked in, he stood by the door. And when the last young person walked in the door, he shut the door and he locked it. <laughs> Health and safety, safeguarding, all at the window. He said, we're not going to leave this room until God has broken out in revival in this land. They prayed all night. They wept. They repented. They were on their faces before God. When they opened the doors at 9 o'clock in the morning, revival had come to Wales. 200,000 people got saved in Wales itself in that three-year period post-revival. Missionaries went out to Africa, to Asia, to the Americas. In some places, that revival is still going on. A hundred odd years later, God acted in power. But it's probably worth saying that Wales was a very poor place at that time. People had no shoes. Most people worked on the mines. Uh, they were inhaling coal dust. They were dying young. There was a, a large amount of crime and alcoholism. And in a way, the society was dead spiritually. It needed resurrecting. So Elijah returns with the woman to the Shumanite's house. And he asked to be locked. He said, can you take me to, to the boy? And he, he, he closes the door behind him. And he does this amazing prophetic action, okay? He lays on the boy. The boy is dead. Mouth to mouth, hand to hand, or arm to arm, leg to leg, he lays on top of him. Now this breaks lots of rules, health and safety rules, but also Jewish rules. There was, there was lots of things to do around dead people. You couldn't touch them. But he laid on him. This was crazy. He was all out for seeing this young man revived. So he does it once and it says the body of the boy began to be a little bit warm. He walks around the room, no doubt, praying before God. God, bring a miracle. God, bring resurrection. And then he lays on the boy again the same thing. He was desperate to see God move. So he lays on the boy again, and the boy then sneezes seven times, and the boy's alive. Amen? What a miracle. But my question is really for us, how committed are we to see resurrection in our communities? Because if you look out there, you see death so often. People not walking with God. People lost, people hungry often, people desperate. What will we do to see our communities resurrected? And by that I mean our communities come to God. Because God is able to resurrect our communities, amen? The ultimate miracle, of course, we know, is that God is able to resurrect our souls. Amen? 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of resurrection. So the, the ultimate miracle is that we move from the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of light. So is God able? Three of you think yes. Is God able? Is God able to raise the dead? Yes. Amen. Is God able to resurrect our community? Is he? I think this side, believe more than you. I don't know. You got faith on this side? Any faith over here? <laughs> You're more like British faith over there. It's a bit quiet. But God is able to resurrect our community. But how much are you willing to give? How far are you willing to go to make that happen? How many risks are you willing to take? How many times are you made to look like a fool? Are you willing to, to take that step? 
Are you willing to speak out? Are you willing to pray? Are you willing to pray them when maybe it doesn't work? Are you willing to speak out when people will think you're a fool? Are you willing to do that? Maybe you've done it before and you're not willing to do it again. Uh, I was taught always, <laughs> better to look a fool by trying and failing than look a fool by not trying at all. Okay, and that's been a bit of a mantra of my life. And if you saw my Scrooge performance at Christmas, you would know that's true. <laughs> not right, Mark. Mark's laughing away. Okay, give it a go. God will meet you as you step out in faith. So Elijah, the man of God, lays himself prospect state, I can't say that word, on a young man, willing to give it all, willing to break conventions because he was desperate to see God move. How desperate are we to see God move in our community, really? What is our priority? And this, this isn't really about Christian work, not Christian work. It's not, it's not about that. It's about our heart's desire for change. You know, what does God see when he looks out at our communities? How desperate is he to see change? And can we align ourselves with his heart and with his purpose? Let's stand together. I'm going to ask the worship team to come back. We're going to go into a time of ministry. Let's spend a moment maybe lifting our hands before God. It says, um, it says in Romans 12 that we should uh, lay ourselves on the altar as living sacrifices. This is our reasonable act of worship. So as we worship, we come not just to sing songs, but to lay before God and say here I am God here I am again Lord forgive me when I've drifted forgive me when my focus has not been on you it's been on something else and Lord I want to see you move I want to see you move in my life hallelujah I want to cry out to you today Lord with the, the deepest need of my heart I want to be real before you and I want to see you move, Lord God. I want to see you move. I want to see you move in my family, in my community, in my school, in my workplace. I want to see you move, Lord God. You're the God of resurrection. You're the God of power. You're the God that is able to change the unchangeable, to bring hope to the hopeless, to open the eyes of the blind. This is the God that we serve. Hallelujah, Jesus. And if you could do it then, Lord God, then you can do it now. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is at work in you today. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. We're just going to sing and then we're going to invite you to come forward. My Jesus. Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of
lift up your hand forever I love you forever I'll stand nothing compares to the promise I have in you Amen If you, um, if you want to be a kingdom shaker, if you want to see things change, if you're desperate to see God move, maybe in your own life or maybe in the lives of our community, I invite you to come forward. I want you to remember this one thing, though. Your will is more powerful than your emotions. Your will is more powerful than your emotions. So, um, in a sense... You know, if you're not feeling it, maybe you just want to make a step and say, God, I want to step into something today. I want to be the one that speaks out. I want to be the one that prays, that makes a difference. I want to be that person today. I want to commit. I want to make a step of faith today before God, before men. So we're going to sing that one more time. But as we sing, if you'd like to come forward as a step of faith today, say, God, that's me. I want to, I'm desperate for more of you. We sang that song earlier. This is the air I breathe. I'm desperate for you, Lord. Desperate. Desperate for you, Lord. So let's uh, sing that one more time. And if you want to come, just come. It's a step of faith. Let's sing. Praise you, Jesus. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. Jesus. My comfort, my shelter, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. pray for you guys um, so congregation if you want to reach out your hands to these guys we are the body of Christ here they are laid on the altars living sacrifices which is holy and pleasing to God that God will empower them today God will empower you today hallelujah God will empower you today with his presence with his love with his ability, God is able. He wants to use you to be hope bringers. Hallelujah, hope bringers. He wants to use you to be community changers. Hallelujah, kingdom shakers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Just reach out our hands before God as we pray. Lord Jesus, thank you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you that you've called us. You've called us, Lord God. Thank you that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead 
is at work in us today, Lord God. Today, hallelujah. Resurrection power, amen. Hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. Resurrection power, praise you, God. Bring your power, Lord God. Bring your love, bring your presence, Lord God. Hallelujah, fill these guys with your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Fill each one of them. May they know your presence. And some of you will be challenged this week. I sense it, I know it. God is saying, you are able. You are able. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen? Amen. You are able today. And you will bring light into dark places. Hallelujah. You will see the kingdom of darkness pushed back and the kingdom of light advanced as you step out in faith. Fill these guys, Lord God. I sense too that God is me in some of these deepest needs as well. As you reach out to God, as you cry out to God, He knows your heart. He knows your heart. Maybe that thing that's been locked away for so long, God is saying He's able. His power is able today. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Grant these guys perseverance, Lord God. I pray for perseverance to push through. Some of you are going to need great perseverance. It says in the, in the Word of God in Hebrews 12, For the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. He had to go through the cross and come out the other end. And in the same way, God is saying sometimes you've got to walk through the pain to get to the glory. So Lord, I pray that you grant them perseverance today in your name to push through the pain. And Lord, we want to see your kingdom come. Amen. We want to see God's kingdom come. God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We will not accept the status quo, Lord God. We will stand up as the people of God. And we will proclaim your name, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that your name is above every other name. Thank you, God, that you are able. Your arm is not so short that it cannot save. Hallelujah. And we pray for our borough, for our boroughs. We pray, Lord God, that you will move. And we pray, Lord God, that just as uh, you've moved in the past and that you're moving now, that you will move here in this place. In Jesus' name, may heaven touch earth here, Lord God. May heaven touch earth here in this place, Lord God. We proclaim it, we speak it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Please be seated. Gareth, God bless you for such an inspiring word. We have come to the end of our service and we have been blessed. There's refreshment served from the hatch in the kitchen, but also in the small hall. If anybody would like to receive prayer, the prayer ministry team will be to my left, your right. You can have somebody to stand with you in prayer. But at this time, I just ask for the Lord to bless and keep you. And I just ask for the Lord to grant you great grace. May he, may he be before you, behind you, and around you as you go through this week. And next week, to the glory of his name, we will meet again. God bless you all. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, team. Amen. Amen. Please. Please go forth to get some refreshments. Have a chat with people you don't know and um, get to, we'll get to know each other. Thank you. Amen. <laughs>